Hello, everyone. Oops. Just uh, finishing um, here. Just doing some final touches here. And we are live. Hello, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, we are just waiting a few more minutes. Okay, so that's not... Sorry about that. Um, we are just uh, finishing here some things. That's a little bit better, I guess, uh, hopefully. All right, so let me know if you um, have any trouble in um, listening to me. My name is Renata, and welcome to my channel. Um, today, we are going to learn uh, a couple things. Oops, I'm just going to do this this way. It's going to be a little better for us. And um, there we go. So today we will learn um, uh, two different designs. One is the poppy, which is this one. And uh, the other one is the pebbles, which... Uh, the two of them, you can do many different things with it. Uh, we're going to learn how to do three different things. Um, so for the poppy uh, and the pebbles, you will learn how to make uh, earrings with it. Um, you can also make a brooch if you like, or you can make a bookmark. So that's the three different um, options that you have. And that's also for uh, Mother's Day. Um, and if you got the kit with us, uh, you received um, a couple different things here. So you received, first of all, um, a little package that comes with basically everything that I just told you about. So the elastics are for the bookmarks. You also got a couple of sets uh, for earrings. So you can make two earrings, uh, two sets of earrings for you or your mom, uh, for you and a friend. Anyway, so the kit is good for two people. So you can make two of those or you can make uh, two brooches. Right, so um, if you didn't get the kit, the kit's also available on my website. The description for um, the links are all in the description. And uh, of course, you got the elastics. With that, you also uh, will get those uh, pre felts. Uh, they are just dark pre felts that your hand dyed. But you can use anything you like. If you have any 
old sweaters, for example, at home and you want to use it, you can do that as well. Or if you have any color or pretty felt, that's also an option. And I just have here for you to show you. Uh, that's basically just a sweater that was felted, just a wool sweater that you can use for a base. It's just something that you can have it so you can have um, a base to work with. And that's, uh, of course, it's going to be for both of the designs, uh, the poppy and the pebble. They also use the pre-felts inside, so it's easy for us to, um, to complete the project. Um, on the kit, you also get uh, two of those, of course, because the kit is good for two people. So you get two of the felting mats. That is great that you can use for this project and other projects as well. And of course, you get the felting needles. Uh, the kit comes with two needles. Uh, this is a number 40, uh, 3840, which is good for uh, what we're going to be doing here. The work uh, that we will be doing it. It's uh, not a very um, rough one, but it's good for uh, what we're going to be doing today. Um, along with that, of course, you will get uh, all the wool you need. So you have some um, red wool for the puppy. And you have this multicolored, which is going to be used for the um, second layer. And you have um, a dark brown uh, blend with the black for the center of the, uh, of the flower. So um, that's the kit for uh, the puppy. And of course, you will get uh, a bag with um, the bead, the glass beads that you need for, of course, for the work that you're going to be doing there. That's the poppy, the kit for the poppy. And for the pebbles, of course, you get uh, two of those as well. Uh, to create uh, the base for uh, the pebble, uh, you will get as well um, pretty much the same thing that I, I was mentioning before, which is um, the little kit with all the hardware uh, to complete the project. And you will get um, different multicolor um, silk fibers that we'll be using to create the detail of the pebbles. Right, so that's it for uh, the materials that we're going to be using it. But I also want to show you the other things that I carry um, around with me um, for this project that you have at home. Um, so the first thing and that we needed is um, those um, golden eye uh, needles. Um, I like them because they are great for the beading work. Um, the, of course, the head there is not too big and it, uh, the beads actually go through them really easily. So that's why I like to have them around. Other things that doesn't come in a kit, but I'm sure you have at home, it's a sewing thread. It can be black or any color you like. I'm using black because I like the, the detailing here. Um, and the way it works with the red. And uh, what else we have here? Um, for the pebbles, we'll also need just a, a, some sort of... Um, um, it can be any sock or anything that's a little bit lighter uh, to use to do the wet felting. Uh, we'll also need uh, just uh, something, a container, and with a little bit soap uh, so we can complete the uh, wet felting part of the project, and that's going to be used in the pebble. And, um, of course, uh, the templates. Uh, the template is available to you on my website, and the link that I just added on uh, the beginning of the chat. Um, 
and also it's in the description if you like to have it it's free you just have to go on the link and download it for yourself um, so it's basically uh, what do you need um, to complete the project that's uh, a scale one to one so that's exactly uh, the size that you get and um, that's um, what you what you already have just for you there so don't forget to check that after you finish here um, I'm also having here some bubble wrap um, again you don't need it to have that if you have it's fine if you don't you can basically uh, just felt it on your own hands because it's such a small piece you, you'd be fine um, I also have some towels here which uh, also comes handy uh, when you need it to uh, to work with wet felting and um, of course uh, this is um, a free needle felting guide that I put it together for you guys. It's on my website as well. So feel free, free to get it. It has with a bunch of information about the wool that we use for needle felting, uh, types of tools, needles, all sorts of information here. And that's all information that I work really hard to put it together. And I hope you enjoy it. This is also free. So uh, don't forget to go there um, on the description below and take a look here. And of course, I am um, here for you. That's the, the goal of having the live stream is uh, hopefully uh, you get something from it. And I'm here to answer any questions you have. So feel free to, uh, to just go ahead and ask on the chat. And then I'll do my best to um, answer them. So without further ado, oh, I'm sorry, before we go ahead, uh, two other things that I really like to have around me when I'm also new to felting, especially for this project, is a set of pliers. Uh, we're going to be using this when we are completing the um, uh, earring part. So that's great uh, to put the, the jump ring in there and to fit everything together. And um, I like to use those uh, pack brushes. Uh, they are great for blending the wool. So I use them a lot, especially uh, if for some reason um, the wool is a little bit felted or, oops, um, or if I want to do some blending work as well. I apologize for that. It's just... Uh, doesn't want to stay there we go hopefully oh that's actually a little better don't you think yeah okay so um we're gonna start now so the first thing that we're gonna do we're just gonna clear some space here and i will start today with the pebble and the reason why is because it's a wet felted and we're gonna need a little bit extra time just to uh, to get this dried and then um, so we can actually add the the earring part there so for um, of course for the pebble I used my template which is here so if you have a home you just print it and then you can cut it around so it's basically two and a half inches by two inches if you want to draw your own pebble design, feel free to do that. This is just a guide for you. And that's basically what I did. I just trace it. Uh, of course, I cut uh, this and I trace it in uh, this big piece of um, felt here. Uh, the piece that I gave on the kit, it I usually uh, just uh, fold in half and cut in here. And then you can just go ahead and cut over just uh, uh, risk just seeing here the design it's a uh, pretty simple and I cannot find my scissors which is also important for this project so have your scissors handy and uh, because I already cut it so I'm not gonna even bother uh, to find where the scissor is <laughs> um, but yep yeah, get some scissors cut in here in half and uh, you have that little guy there. So you're gonna need to have two of them, of course. And 
the second step is to get um, the piece of wool. I do have in here like um, a black charcoal uh, type of wool. So what I want to do is gonna take my I can leave my template here if I like and I will just go around just like that. Oh, there we go. I found my scissors. Perfect. So I'll go around here. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just going to do this. And I'm just going to cut it. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to round. I'll pull a little bit around here just to cover the whole thing just like that and I'm just going to make sure that I have that um, some sort of a close to the same size and I will do the same thing with the other and again let me know if you have any questions I'll be happy to answer you and again cutting and just give a little Pulling a little bit like that to make sure that's all around it. And that's what we need for that. Because I want to get the wet felting uh, process a little bit faster, I'm going to start to needle felting. So needle felting, if you've never done this before, it's basically you use the needles that you have. And on the very edge here, you have barbs there is a uh, very tiny barbs there it's hard to see but i'll do my best to try to show you so they have a like a little barbs there and um yeah so they are really sharp anyway so those barbs that they're gonna do the job first to tangle the wool as we uh punch them into the piece that we have there uh, one thing that you need to be careful with is uh, because they are very sharp you need to uh, leave your fingers away from it because if this goes to your fingers it's really sharp and you can get hurt really fast so it's very important to really pay attention to uh, where you're going with the needle I like to hold my needles just like this so I'll have a better um, surface area that I, I'm actually applying without being close to the uh, problematic part which is this part and I'm just uh, going inside and out in the same angle that's a very important thing to do because those guys are really sharp but they also very fragile so if you do this in if you go in one angle and bend a little bit and go out as you do this your needles gonna start to bend 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 and until you will get uh you break it and once you break it this thing here it's gonna fly away and you might not even know where you went or it might go somewhere that's gonna hurt you and we don't want that so uh really pay attention to the angle that you're going with uh your uh needle which is going to go if it's going a straight angle it needs to leave a straight angle if it's going 45 it's leaving at 45 as well so this is very important that's why i really like to uh, take my time and explain that to you no matter how many times you are uh, in my class but because this is just a safety issue and it needs to be addressed all right so I'm going to start just to poke and then once you have that in mind, just really be mindful where you're going. You're going in and out, in and out, in and out. And of course, you need to go this in all sides of your design to make sure that it's going to be attached to the other side and to the other surface. So the goal here is to put all the barbs inside the piece and the barbs it's going to do uh, the movement of tangling the fibers and the scales of the wool will get attached and it get tangled and you create a very strong fiber 
So that's what we're going for and that's what we're going to be doing here now. So once you get more confident, of course, you can uh, start to go a little faster. Really pay attention to the movement that you were doing it. And another thing that you need to be careful, it's every couple minutes, just flip your work and work in the other side. And did you see here, this is all the hair that's gonna, uh, that was pushed inside and is coming out. So that's a good sign. It means that's, that we're getting the felting process started. So that's what we're going to be doing here. And um, we can just keep going and doing the same movement. Like now, this is one needle. And that's great. And it's really good for detailing work, especially uh, on at the end of my project. But I do have this guy here as well, which I love. So this is uh, just a needle holder or... Uh, a pan as I like to call and you are able to put in here three six eight nine needles in one uh, in at one time so uh, it's really easy and simple to replace a needle if for some reason you break some of them just come here and remove the one and add the other one or if you want to add one more or two more, it doesn't matter, um, you can do that. What that's going to do for us, it really will speed the process, and I just find this amazing. And it's great for uh, flat work, which that's what we're doing today. We're doing only flat work. We're not working 3D here. So it really helps to speed the process, because instead of you poking in one spot, you were poking, in my case, in three different spots at the same time. So you really get the process going a little bit faster than as you would just with um, with one. Right, so now what we're gonna do here, I'm just kind of, you see, I'm just combing a little bit. And this has just helped me, uh, helping me to give some shape, which is the pebble shape that we are doing here. And I'm, you see, I'm going a little bit deep and slower because I just really want to make sure that I'm getting the edges right. And again, I'm flipping the work. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side. And again, I'm just combing a little bit. And this is like... I could do it even with my hands, but I just like uh, end up doing it with a needle, but um, not don't apply pressure uh, because otherwise you will break the needle. So in here on the edges, I'm going slowly, but I'm going really deep. And um, this is just a piece of foam that I um, covered with um, some cotton batting, which is the same quilt batting that you, you have if you work with um, textiles or anything really. It's just something to help uh, the foam stay in place and doesn't come to my work. And um, this guy is going to do the same thing. The guy that you received it, uh, on the kit is the same thing. This is just a different material. And I like to use because it's a little bit shorter and easy to, um, to ship. So that's why I use for my kits. But basically, it's anything you have at home. If you can even make your own little, little pillow with... Um, some jute or even some old um, sweater and fill up with rice. Um, the reason why we have the pillow is just to protect the needles and the surface that you're working with. Um, so you prevent the breakage and you prevent also um, any damage to your table or anything like that. So that's the only reason why we have the, the mat. Again, let me know if you have any questions and I'm here uh, and I'm happy to answer 
your questions and you are free to follow along with me if you have any material if you don't um i still have some kits if you like to try with my kids or if you want to do this later uh, the course it's recorded and will be available in the same link to you if you like to come by another time with your mom with your friend and you can watch many times you like so um if you're just following along feel free to grab your wine beer and just enjoy i cannot because i'm using sharp needles and once someone asks me oh that would be great if you do a event like felt and sip like paint and sip but and i said i'm not sure the needles wouldn't be a good idea <laughs> to deal with um alcohol and needles i think after the second glass of wine you wouldn't be too much focus and i'm sure it would yeah it wouldn't be a happy thing to do all right so as you can see here i got uh pretty close of what my pebble looked like but of course it is bigger way bigger than actually um the final project is which is fine because basically what we're doing here we're just securing place and uh, we're going to be wet felting this piece, which will really help uh, the felting process uh, get faster and, um, and uh, get to the place that we want to be. So for the pebbles here, it's a very fine detailing. And this is like a basically is one of a kind. And if you have any silk fibers really or any other, uh, other fiber that's different than wool, would be nice to to use it because what happens here this very nice design i'm just trying to get a little closer so you can see here it's created by the differentiation of the shrinkage of both fibers so uh, the wool shrinks in a different rate um ratio uh than uh the silk and the silk gets really curly really easily and that's why you create this nice variation there I'm not getting a good focus there but hopefully uh you got uh you got it and uh, there is pictures there on my instagram that you can really see the difference um in there and um this is achieved this effect is achieved with really really fine wool um silk and you see how just how much i put it here it's basically nothing this is the amount uh, that comes in the kit but in here you have like enough to make at least uh 10 sets of earrings because you really you don't need much to get that kind of effect and i just love this effect because it really gives you know like this nice vein and um it's just really pretty i really i really like that effect anyway so so this is what we are gonna be using it which is really really little and because i want to give um some extra something a little bit more fancier i'm also gonna add some yellow and black mixed black so this is a very very little as you can see you can almost um it's almost hard to see on the on the screen there but uh hopefully you got it and so what we're gonna be doing here it's basically we we'll try to open up a bit in here just to create like a little wave design and um, you're gonna wrap around on the from the base right here and you will place the yellow which doesn't have to be in the same um, in the same orientation it can be on the uh, more in one side than the other and then you're gonna wrap around as well and very delicate you just placed in a place that you think that's uh, that speaks to you that's just like that 
and just like this you have your first one ready so now uh, that we are ready for um, the wet felting part I'm just gonna move some stuff around and um, all right so now that we have our um, pebble ready I'm just gonna move my towel here and I will put just my bubble wrap and I hit some water earlier and I'm just gonna add some water here so you want to create some soapy water that's why you need a little bit of soap so the soap it really helps oops it helps with a uh, felting process it's hot but not too hot if you have just the uh, the water from um, from the sink it's fine and then I'm just grabbing my penny hose here just like that and I will place it in here and I will go around just like that right so what this uh, penny hose is doing for me here is just making sure the design that I created it's being holding place and so it's just all held in place there and uh, what I'm going to be doing next I'm just going to dunk in the hot water just like this mine's a little bit too hot <laughs> of water but that's fine and oops, ah, it's hot okay and uh, you press it just to remove the axis and you see that's all soapy now which is great that's what we want and you can tell right away just after i wet it it's already uh, smaller than it uh, used to be so what I'm going to be doing now, I'm just going to give a lot of, make a little friction just here. You might see the table just moving. It's fine. And you don't need to do much. It's just basically a little bit just to secure things in place. I'm just uh, ducking water again. Just to get some more friction going and like I said like if you don't have um, the little bubble wrap there that's fine you can do in your hands too um, if you have one of those old um, laundry boards or washing boards as you call it, that's also great but if you don't, if you just have your hands, it's fine. Just do like that. Just rub against each other. And basically, it's it. I'm um, just going to take a look here to see how is it going. Oh, there you go. Look at that. It's, um, it's getting nicely felted. So those are two different ways of felting things. So... You could definitely just you could just wet felt it this if you like but because I would like to keep a certain shape um, the needle felting prior to the wet felting really helped me to get to a point that was easy and the pre felt that's inside it's acting like the the inner part of our sandwich as uh, as you may it really helps with the felting process too because um, you use very very little like wool um, to for the needle felting and um, and you get a very nice shape and it's um, sturdier than if you just do with uh, with the fleece itself and if you feel that's like a little bit um, rough in one edge or other. You can also just uh, on your own hands just do like a little bit like a little roll there 
and roll it on your hands just like that. There we go. And you see how easy and fast like it just became really small. So that's the great thing about the, um, the hot water and the, just the small friction and you can see here. And so what I really recommend it to you if you're doing this at home, every now and then just uh, really a double check with your first pair of earrings. Just make sure that you have uh, pretty much the same size if you like to be uh, symmetrical. If you don't, if you want to have one a little bit bigger than other, it's fine too. And um, you see I'm rolling here into di different directions. And it's not much because it's such a small piece, right? So this is going to felt really, really fast. Um, I think I'm, I'm okay with the size here. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty close to uh, what you have. Yeah, pretty close to, to the first one. And um, the other one is um, just like that, same thing. So, of course, the silk, it will react differently than the wool. And then they will be different. Uh, all of them, they will be one of a kind. So, But they will be very, very close to each other. So what we're going to need to do now is wash this guy here and remove all the soap. The soap cannot stay in there. The reason why is if you use, uh, if you just uh, do the felting and leave the soap there, the soap has a different pH than the wool. And as it dries, it's going to start to eat the fibers. So, and then we don't want that, right? So you want a nice um, pair of earrings. They're going to last. So really make sure that you wash them well and remove all, all the soap from there, okay? I'm going to leave this aside. I might just uh, wash a little bit here. Just to kind of uh, remove. Right. So, yeah. And um, just let it sit there to dry. You can also help out with the towel. And then as you, a lot of people may think that the wet felting is like crazy. Um, I mean, crazy in a sense that's all messy. I just wet felt here on my table and basically no water. So uh, you definitely doable. You can definitely do things, uh, wet felted items at home without creating a mess. So uh, there we go. So that's our first guy there. And of course, you're going to repeat that stuff with um, two more times. Oh, one more time if you're doing a pair of earrings. Um, yes, a pair of earrings, yes. So let's move the stuff aside because we don't need that anymore. So that concludes our wet felting part, which is great. So we have that out of the way. I had another one done here. And of course, you wanna have this dry, at least like until it's really dry. Uh, you could also um, iron it. I do not recommend iron it um, because the, fel the silk fibers are um, different than the wool fibers and it, it's just it's, it's just easier to wait to dry because if you um, press it with a hot iron, you might cause um, the silk fibers to become dull and that you lose all the nice shiny um, properties that um, the silk has it. So you want a very nice um, and bright um, silk coming through the wool. So I would just recommend, this doesn't take long to, to get dry anyway. Um, just set it aside, close to the heater or something like that, and this will be dry in no time. And you'll be able to attach the, the earrings, uh, the hardware part. Right, so now, if you want to make this into a brooch, which is a, a cool brooch, uh, you can definitely do that. So what we're going to be using is um, those guys here. Um, 
This is just a, a regular brooch hardware. I got mine at um, my local craft shop, which it happens to be Michael's. I'm not getting money to uh, say anything in here, but anyway, they have that there or really anywhere you you want it to to look for it online i'm sure you find it online as well um, but basically what we're going to do here you have two options i prefer to do the sewing option but if you don't care or if you don't have anything handy you can also use hot glue um, which if you are comfortable using hot glue sure you go ahead um people who are not used to they tend to make a mess <laughs> but it's up to you you can do that or not uh, but if you want to just sew like me it's just super easy there is just uh, uh, three different points here it's gonna open uh, there we go so just move it away place where you want it to be Let's see, I want to kind of center, and I think this side is nicer, All right? All right, so I'm starting here from this uh, part here, and I make a little knot in there, and I just pull in a little bit, and I come in on the inside of the circle, and I'm going again just in here behind that and coming on the other side right and uh, we'll go now from the outside to the inside just like this and i am going inside the circle and coming outside but as you can see it's not coming through the other side is between here so it's a, a a very like it's a very um nice uh cushion here so you don't need to go with your needle all the way through to the other side because otherwise you'll be able to see we don't want that um so we're just going through a little bit and coming out on this on the back anyway so it's just to secure and i i wouldn't even I could do much, I'll just do maybe do two or three and I will move to the other, to the other side. Just do a little tug there. And now I will just go inside here. And I mean, this is not something that's like really, really heavy. So you even be okay just uh, doing one here and one at the end. I'm just going to do one here in the middle just kind of just to, just to say that I did it. Just a second. There we go. And just make sure you... <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just... Uh... Grab a sip of water here and make sure that you're getting everything like at least lighten up in there. And always like from the outside, outside to the inside, and then leaving outside. Oops. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. Sorry about that. Our uh, the cell phone it's not being very nice with us tonight. There we go. So, okay, one more, and then we're ready to move on. All right. Okay, not the beautiful, the most beautiful thing, but um, I guess you got the idea. And I'm just going back inside here. Okay, and I'm 
make sure that I'm not going um, on the other end and I will come back in here just went through the, the loop that was going to um, be ready to to be created and one more and then we are ready to finalize that and then you see there is a loop here that was just being uh, ready to hopefully you can see yeah so this loop here that we just created and go inside them and make a little knot and now I will go back in the center and all the way. There we go. So now I have this thread hanging here. Just cut it. And as you open up, it's invisible. And then you have your piece there secured. And I mean, just to show you this, how to do it. And of course, feel free to do more loops or if you have a better way to do it, be my guest. And um, now we can close again and it's going to be a nice one. Right, and then that's it. It's pretty easy. I like this brooch, it's easy to, uh, to do stuff with it. And Let's say this is your jacket, just go there, oops, and back. Oops, and there we go. Nice pin. And that's your brooch. All right, so let's move on and um, so to make, um, yeah, so that's the dry one. So to make the bookmark, it's pretty similar as well. So what you need to do, of course, um, you just get this as an example of a book per se so the way it works you just you mark a page from one side and you measure that's about the size of the page and of course this works best with the hardcover books so and then your pin is going to be just here and this is a nice uh, thing that you have on the outside of the book and you put on the page that you want it and then you just replace it as you go. Let me just get uh, actually a hardcover book which I think is going to be um, our best bet. There you go. So um, you have we have a book here, and that's going to be way easier to explain what I was talking about. All right. So you have the book, and um, basically you can customize. You can do any size you like. And then I just have a piece of elastic. You want something that's a little bit um, tight, so but not too tight because otherwise you're gonna um, cause damage to your book. This is fine. I'm good with that. So what I'm gonna do here, just so you know, I know if that's what I have. And course again you can glue it or you can sew it. I'm just gonna do
and then you just do the same thing um, on both sides. Here you can start to give an outline to the shapes you like or to give a paper the three lines here between the elastics and go into the loop and close with the knot. You have the spots here. And then the lines cut the axis. this guy too and then I just have to put my um, put some more and I like to work with double thread just because I feel that's a little bit more secure and hopefully um, hopefully this one is gonna Help me here, and then we'll thread this needle quickly. Oh, there you go. It's my lucky day. All right, so. It doesn't have to be too long. Maybe I went too long in here, but it's okay. Let's just do a knot at the end here. Perfect. And I will secure the other side too, just because I want to have something nicer. And uh, feel free to uh, ask me anything if you like. Um, I have my eye on the chat. Um, yep, yeah, well, I will let you hear from you. What do you think? If you like the, this option or if you have other options too, if you have in mind uh, how you can use this project for any other thing, that would be nice. I'd love to hear because there is many other options. I'm sure that we can do this um, work with the same design, but um, using it for other things. So I would love to hear from you. If you're around, don't be shy. Right, so I think I'm gonna do one more here. Yeah, and like I said, it is a long thread. I shouldn't do that. It's a little bit too long and that's why it is causing us trouble. Okay, so I think it's pretty good. So I'm starting here from one side. Let me just, oh, that's the wet one. So the way it works, um, it's basically we're going to secure it, starting securing one side here. And I am going inside the pebble and going through the elastic again. Make sure that you're not pinching the other side. And you have a starting to secure one side here and then um, go again in the wool because you were coming out from the elastic. So now you go inside the wool underneath the elastic, but still through the wool. And you're going inside now through the elastic. And just on the side here, through the wool. Again, the the outer part, it's not being touched by the needle at any point. Because, I mean, you could, but it, it would uh, show like a very tiny um, stitch there. But uh, if that happens, it's not the end of the world or anything. I'm just going to cut this guy here because that's driving me crazy. Right, so you, we secure one spot here and I will just do one more time. Um, 
one more loop. And that's our loop here, which I'm going. Hopefully you can see that that's the loop there. And I'm going to just to make a little knot there. All right. So now we want to secure the other side as well. So what I'm going to do, I could cut the thread and start another one here, but I just want to make things easier for us. So I'm going through underneath, but it's still through the wool. So the thread is invisible in either side, so you cannot see that. But So I reach the other end, which is the end that I want to be holding now. So I'm going, I'm outside, I'm going through, oops, ouch, um, through the elastic and coming out just like this. Again, of course, it's a very long thread and it's going to tangle, which is good. So um, I can actually show you how to untangle. Sometimes it's not easy, but you're still able to do it. Or if you don't have the patience, you can just cut it and start it over. I'm just gonna try to save this guy here because, you know, why not? So we'll see here. Yeah, that's a little trick I usually just to put my needle through the knots and I usually get the things out. Hopefully we're gonna be we will be able to do this today. Oh wow. Well. Yep, today is not the day. That's okay. I'm just going to tangle here and uh, I'm going to cut it. Right. So good. There we go. Get this guy here too. Perfect. All right, so I'm just gonna make quickly. Oops. One more. There we go. So we secure um, this side. And I will do my last loop here. And we are ready to move on. Going through the loop and loop the knot. And like I said, I'm going to do the same thing as I did with our brooch. I'm going this time all the way through. And this way, I secure my knot inside of the piece. And then we have it ready. So cut it. And I will cut the other one, which is fine because it was already inside. And then we have this nice um, bookmark, which is just here. So like I said, the way it works, you just put through the cover, just like this. And as you flip the pages, like let's say if you want to uh, save this page here, it's secure for you. 
pretty nice, isn't it? And you have like a nice, um, that's the, that's the inside. Has a nice, uh, little thing to embellish your book. There you go. So, um, well, I'm going to just leave it here. So that's our bookmark. And uh, now we're going to move on to our um, flower, which is the poppy. So for the poppy, uh, it's the same thing. Uh, if you have a piece about this size, um, our poppy is about two and a half by two and a half inches. Again, this template is like free for you to grab. Just go on the description below of this YouTube t uh, YouTube video and um, download it there. Um, like I said, the piece usually give you uh, two. So you can just go ahead and um, split those guides in two. I'll grab this piece. This is a little bigger. And you have it. And of course, you have some leftovers there. If you have your template that's already cut it, you just put the paper on top, trace it and cut it. Or if you have um, one of those ready, you can just go ahead and cut it around just like I'm doing it. And the beginning here, like really is just, you can even eyeball it if you like. I like to use a template just because it gives me a better um, idea of size. And it's not perfect. And we are going to make it perfect as we go. So now I have the two pieces uh, in here. And what I'm going to be doing now, it's basically we're going back to our needle felting part, which is... Um, which is that, and uh, what I'm gonna be doing it, I'm gonna be using some red wool, and um, I'm gonna place it here. And if you have the colors, feel free to use any color you like. And the way I like to start, I like to start with by petals, so I kind of like create a little U shape, and I just start to press it. Just punch against your template there. And if you have only one needle, it's fine. It's the same thing that we're going to be doing here again. Just don't forget to go all around. And then you are going to be moving on to the next one. Don't forget to remove your piece of a couple uh, seconds. Just to make sure that's not getting totally attached to, to your uh, mat. Did you see here? Like it's pretty fast and um, doesn't take long for you to at least get the first attachment done. I'm gonna be using uh, my uh, three needles because you know the magic of TV, right? So we we are doing here um, with a certain time, and I'm sure you guys have other things to do too. So I will just gonna get, get a little bit faster. So that's why I'm using the three. If you have the three, feel free to use um, that. And uh, if you like this tutorial, like tell your friends because it's free. And it's going to be recorded. So if you have someone that you might like that, but they just didn't have time to join us today, it's going to be recorded here. And uh, don't forget to like. That will really help me to get the word out there and uh, that's free for you and you have all the tools you need the template and the step by step right so this is just the first part of course and we have to keep going and you build up as we go right so again I got to the to this to our first petal and again I'm going to continue doing this 
and it's really important you to really pay attention because that's how you're gonna get the shape you like and the goal here is really to fill up um, all the areas and the reason why I'm using the dark uh, pre felt it's because I feel that's pop it pops a little more if I have the dark background against um, a lighter background I think the, the the red just pops more and you see here you see when you're doing a good job when they actually seen all the the fleece going through the other side so that's what we want to see don't worry about this right now because you can use extra um, red wool to cover the top and make sure that's going to be a nice um, finishing. I already um, did a little bit in here on this guy that's a little bit more um, done. And I'm going to continue doing it on this guy. So you see there is a difference, right? This a lot of, there is some work done that's, that, that was done there. So what I want to show you here right now is basically working with the one needle. You really want to make sure that you have your edges well done because this piece is going to be only needle felted. So you really want to make sure that you have a nice finishing, right? Um, which is totally doable. You don't need to wet felt everything you do just to get a smooth finishing. You can definitely get a, a good finishing just with the needle felting. And But there is, of course, uh, more work and more time put into it which is fine. Um, I love needle felting, so I think it's a great, uh, great thing to do. And you notice here what I'm doing, right? Like, so you notice that I'm going on the very edge here, doing the movement of the shape that I want to achieve. So that is the goal. And now I'm moving the direction here. And you see that I'm being just very gentle now because my fingers are really close to the needle. And that can become a problem if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. What I'm doing here, it's very fine movement. And I'm really making sure that I know where my needle is going. And I'm doing this slowly. I'm not doing this like crazy it's because I don't want to get hurt. Another tip for you, if you have a piece of anything really even paper and if you want to protect your fingers what we're gonna do we're gonna put it um just a piece around and then we will hold the piece that we are doing it in this way my fingers are protected and away from from the sharp needle and you get a very nice edge just doing this which is very nice and you feel more protected and more confident on the work that you're doing it. But again, really focus. This is very important part because you're getting the nice edges of your flower. And um, you really want to make sure that you have a nice finishing on the edges. All right, so I'm just gonna show you this and I'm gonna work a little bit more. Again, hold with your index on top, just make things easier. And I want another thing I wanna tell you too, it's like, it's not about the strength. Um, you're not gonna get any faster if you put more strength on your fingers. The only thing that you're gonna do to you is to get hurt because you're holding with so much pressure that your fingers will get sore at the end. So light and nice. And if you feel confident enough to start to work a little bit faster, good, you can do that. Just make sure that you have other fingers away. You have some, you have your other hand as support, but don't be too close. To the needle because that's when you get hurt right 
so I think, um, so what I'm going to be doing now is just kind of going between the paddles and really going inside and out. So I'm creating those gaps here and they are more evident. And that's how um, we are doing here, right? All right, so, and um, I'm gonna be doing here too. And then as you added this uh, movement on the same area, you will get, you see it's gonna become smaller and more defined. And that's great to know because as the amount of uh, passes that you do it in the, in the region, it's in an area there, that's where the detailing that you get. So that's just good to have in mind. All right. And you see here, like this is a, this area really, I went there more times than this area because you don't see much more here. So it means that that's giving me a clue that I really want to um, work more this area here. Another thing to think about it too, you can do a pinch test. If it, things are just falling apart as you pinch, it means that's not felt in not felt it enough in our case here it's not too much trouble if it's not that much the reason why is it's because I still have one more layer to add and the black layer and the inner layer so what I'm going to be doing at least is holding in place in here which is good and what I'm going to be doing I'm be I will be moving on to the second layer and as I work this layer it will start to become more felted because I'm going back and forth on all the layers so so you need very little and what I want to do here I want to make sure that I'm covering the right areas so I'm making a little circle with my hands just like this and this is more than enough to start. And as I start to add things in there, you notice that might uh, be little after, and then you can add more. That's totally fine too. So first I'm just doing the deep movements, which I'm going really inside, total, totally inside to really get things going. And I'm kind of making a circular movement just like that see and I'm moving my piece around to make sure that's not stuck in place there we go so I have this area done and like I can tell here if I need more or less, which is fine. Uh, I think for the size of this flower, it's okay. And um, I think I'm good with this. I think it's good, just like that. And I will add, I might just add a little more just to make a little more in here and then because it's such a fine space i will use just my uh, one needle and just going around and then i'm just uh, pulling to make sure that i get the right area Yeah, so I increase a little more in there, which is good. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to the next one. Um, so, which this might be a little bit too much. 
So I'm just rolling on my uh, middle finger just like that. So that's how I create a little circle. And I'm just going to start to really work from the center. Just make sure that I got that area done. And then I start to work on the sides there. There we go. So, so now that I have, um, so this area that's uh, pretty much done. Um, I still have uh, some things to do, of course. I have the beading work to do. And I'm noticing here, you see this area, this, those guys are bigger than this. And I can always come back and add more, which is also fine. So you just have like to start from the, the place that you want to start that it's missing. And I'm just going to grab some red in here. And here. So I will start in here and just to press a little more. And I just work my way around here. And this way it's going to be a little bit more uniform. Just work my way around here. And that's more like it. It's more, it's a little bit bigger. That's what we're looking for. And of course, I mean, like if you want to do, if you want to measure with a ruler, feel free to do it. I like to do, um, just eyeball it. And in here, you can just uh, give a little fold just fold and go back so you make sure that you have all the area and in here you see i'm going on the sides or you can do just like this as well And I'm just trying to get things faster here. There we go. Right. And again, just make sure you have this side ready and I will just do one more side here and I will flip it just to check how my back is doing there really important to really to go in all places all areas this is needs a little bit more work here because it's kind of a you can see it's a little bit more open than the other areas. Okay. So this is how it starts. That's a good start. It is a little bit more work 
but I will show you. And you see, really went through, so that's a good sign. And those guys here, don't worry about it. You, we can always like, go back here and uh, cut some just to give a better finishing. And we can cover all this after we stitch it. Uh, we can cover with some red and it's going to give a nice finishing as well. So uh, what we're going to be moving on is to um, just to the beading part. So it will give you an idea. Um, how it's how to start to work with okay so again uh, thread your needle give a little knot I like to work um, from the center so what we're gonna do here first um, we're gonna start we really want to emphasize those four sides here that's what we're going to be doing it. So I will start from uh, one end, which is this guy here. And I have my uh, knot there. And I will just make the first stitch. And I will come back there. And do one more. Until the edge. And then when we come to the very edge there, I will do a loop. So make sure this is really is the size that I, I want it. Okay. And then I will do one more here as well. So, and then I will start to work Then I can start to work from, um, start my beading work just from one side here And then this way I will show you how to, to work with the beads So I use about 85 beads per poppy, so you know how much you, you need roughly. And of course, this will depend um, what's the size of your bead and etc. So I started just going around the yellow circle. I'm going to put one bead and then I go um, to the outside. And then I just grab another one and go on to the next one. I don't think I'll be able to do all of it, um, all the beads today, but just so you know um, how it works. I just put one and then I go back. And then just try to do as close as I can to create that. And the nicer, the tighter you are, I mean, you can be the, the nicer it's going to be the batching. But like I said, you don't need to be like too crazy about it because if you like screw up or anything, you just, um, you can just felt it on the back too. I don't know if there is a, yeah, so you can do some felting work on top too. So, and then you, you kind of, uh, you, you hidden, you hide all of it. So it's fine. So I wouldn't even worry about it. Um, 
if you want to get done this, um, if you want to get this done, or, um, oops, I'm talking to you and I'm being wrong. Yeah, so that's, uh, you see what I did here? I went uh, around, I should go back uh, from the same place that I went to. So it's okay. You can always uh, go back here. Bum, bum, bum. There we go. Hopefully. There we go. Got it. Um, I'm just going to undo that. And we are back on track. And like when you're adding the beads, you really need to be tight. Because if you're not, it is just going to be a mess here. And it's nicer to be very close to each other. And if you want to work with some bigger beads, you can do that too, right? And then it's going to be faster. Just put as close as you can as the other one so you have a better finishing. All right, so I'm just going to try to finish at least one section of that so you have it. This bead, beading board is, it is a time consuming one, but it's, it's going to be really nice as you, as you saw it. Don't forget to go back. Yeah, it is starting to, to get in shape in there. Who's there? And then I'm working with like the three different kinds. Um, I have the greenish, like a black greenish one, um, which is the one that I go, that I use the most, which is this one. And I have a black, which I'm going to show you in a minute because we're going to be doing um, just going to this end and I'm going to finish up this side and then you we're going to the middle part there. Oops. And then I have the golden and the black ones, which is the one that I, I use for the center part. Uh, no, that's a black one. Okay. That's a green one. Green. Right. Oops. Right. So we have one section done, and then what we're going to be doing it, we are going with a straight line here. Make sure that we are securing the beads in place. There we go, and, and you can do a back stitch if you like, whatever you feel comfortable with, just to secure this area here. Sometimes I do a back stitch, sometimes I don't, so it depends. And this is a little bit fuzzy there because it should be more felted, and we will felt it a little more. Right, so don't forget to go around when you get closer to the edge. 
and I usually just do my way back again. So usually just the black there. Do one more here, and you kind of get that straight line there. Okay, so now I am uh, instead I'm not gonna even bother doing anything. Um, I can do just a slip knot there, go into the loop, come back and go inside and I will show up here in the center but it because it's through you not really seeing what I'm doing good so now for the center what we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be using some of the uh, golden ones and just basically just go um, back Oops, just like that. I might have to give just a little bit of, just to felt a little more because it seems very um, puffy. It's very puffy. So we want to work in a better surface, something more flat, because if it's really puffy, you cannot see the beads. So. That's better. You just need a little more work there. That's all. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That's way better. Right. So now that you have your nice center, we just keep going and then we, I like to uh, put some goldens and some uh, black just to give a very, and that's like a very um, sprinkle kind of a stitch. It, there is no order for this one, it's basically just to kind of have a nice effect between the black and um, the golden, so I just like to one black and one gold and one black and one gold and um, and I just did again. There we go. Okay. Just did it again. It's okay. I'm gonna do it. What are we gonna do? Well, it's gonna be there. And one more black. And just one of the golden one there. And it starts to get um, an effect there, which is nice. Oops. And, and the black one. And you can put just add as many as you like. Um, I think I added, I think it was a 10 in the center, but if you like to add more or less, up to you. Yeah, and you see, you see some, uh, yes, it becomes a nicer and brighter. And I think I'll add one more and uh, that's it. And we will move on 
into the next one. And just do another knot. Without having to bend my needle and cut it. Okay, so we have one section done and we have the center part done, which is, uh, you can see, it's kind of uh, really bright in there. Okay, so now that I'm going to start to work here in the center, I'm just going to work a little more the yellow part here just to get flat. And um, we'll move on to the next stage. And I like to work with this variegated color, just give more interest to the piece. But if you just have yellow, it's fine too. Um, to me, just give more depth to the piece. So, and you can see here, there's a lot going on on the back. But again, don't even worry about this now. Um, we'll get there. Okay, so now, let's... Uh, we're going to need more thread. So what we need to do here, we do need to do some stitching. And uh, there is some stitch around the black area and there is stitch in between. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. And the way I like to divide it, it's like there is two sections here. And there is uh, two more here. So the line that goes straight, it goes all the way. So the line that goes between the paddles, they go all the way in the center, go all the way in the center. So that's what we're going to be doing now. Okay. And um, I just need to find my needle. Let me know if you see my needle around because I think I just <laughs> miss it. Oops, right here. There we go. Awesome. Okay, let's make knot again. I wish I had some background song going on. It's okay. There we go. So yeah, don't forget to like if you like this video. This really is going to help me to let other people know that you like it. And they might like it too. I'm just going to move this uh, for a moment. And right. So remember what I told you. So uh, we're starting from these two sections and then we go do the lines on the same place. And here we're going to do like a little bit of longer stitches. So it's going to be easier for us to know where we are going. Going through all the way. And um, this may be a little bit on the long side. So when is a too long of a thread, I hold uh, one end to 
my two fingers and I just let it go after. Give a little tug and at this point I would do just a back stitch and I just make sure that I got it right. And uh, there we go. So you have a more just uh, go from this way here go into the next section just going around it's a little bit hard to see I know that sorry about that but it's just uh, the little the fleece is just hard to focus. I don't think the. But I'm just doing a back stitch until the next section, which are just reaching out here. Oops. Can you see? There you go. And then. And I'm going up just to make the, the section in there. And those stitches are not like to be visible anyway, it's just to give some depth and you have definition just by giving the depth that you needed. And then my next one is going to be pretty much close to where the, the bead is. So I'll have like a nice straight black line there. Hopefully at this point you can see that. So there's those two sections being made. And since my um, my thread is here, I'm going to do some beading to the next section. Oops. Uh, and maybe there. No time. And you see I'm working on the, um, my way back so I put the thread at the front and I put the beading the bead here and I go back close to the previous one so that gives a nice and um, tight so I'm going a little bit further grab the bead and going back closer to that and that's how I like to work because it gives me the feeling that's a little bit tighter than if I do the opposite so if you like to work in another way you can also work in a different way but that's what I like to do so I'm going further and bead and closer to the previous one So it's getting there. Almost getting to the next section. And bead and back. And again. I might do just this next section and then we can do uh, the middle part. So in this way you have all the steps for the process to complete um, the flower. And for backing, for the finishing, is the same one that I just showed you with the pebble. So it's just the same process. So because we're running short of time here, um, I just want to make sure that you got it all the different techniques and uh, the different finishings. So you have all the ideas you needed for um for your gift or for yourself so you'll be able to make it all okay so we got to the next section and again we are just going here on top and then we go back to the bottom and I will show you how to make the um, the nice detailing on the petals themselves 
and then now they're closing to the edge I will go around so I'm just going back around here and then again I'm getting a nice detail in there and since I'm in the middle again I'm going all the way back closing the section So I'm done here. So we have this section and this section completed. And now what we're going to do, we need to do the detailing here and here, just like that. So in here on the yellow part, we just have one, which is fine. We can definitely do that. And then on the each petal, we have one, two, three, four, five in each. Of course, it will depend on the size that you have your petal. If you want to do just three or just four, it's up to you. I like to work with the same numbers. If I do have one, two, three, four, five, I will have either three. So that's um, not an even number. So we're just going to follow the same rule, even though it's a small form. I just do three and then one in here. So because I am back here to the brown area, so I'm going to do like the same thing that we do it, go around to the black part just a little bit. So I want to get to the center and then I'm going up. Good. and then now I can go up because it's just right here in the center and then I would do um, probably one stitch it's enough just like that so you have this nice uh, straight line and then I go one more time up and grab and that's a black bead and I would add here and then you have your bead there. And go back, just complete the size here. And then you have this side done. And now you're just gonna go back to the second section And in the center, and then you do a nice straight line about here. And black. And then, and then you have your black one there. Just go through the bead one more time. And then out, just like that. And because I'm finishing here and then I'm going up, I'm just going to do a loop and going through the loop just to secure the bead there. And now I'm going inside and out. So you don't see this uh, stitch because it's inside. So I'm right here in the center, which is definitely what I want to be. So I want to do one stitch here and I will do one more. Because that's going to be the tall one right in the center. Because you, if you see here, there is one tall one two similar size and the small ones there so because of this is a little bit smaller than the other ones i would do the tall one for sure 
There we go. And then again, that's a blonde. Oh, that's the green one. So we are going back to the green now. And um, add my green there. And um, just going back here. This is easy for me. I mean, this way is really secure. One more. And then we go in here on the next one. It can be through the, the beads, it's fine. It's just easier to kind of measure. So I'm using two beads as my um, as my reference. So I'm going just one stitch here because that's gonna be a smaller one. And a red the bead there. And then I'll go back just one more time here in the bead. And then go back. Good. So I have like a secure there three beads. Oh, the two beads, sorry. And then go back again here. And then I will jump on the, the two there on the other side. And then I'll be around here. Oops. There we go. And then we'll add The bead and I mean just because for demonstration I can probably fit two more here but I just want to show you how it looks with the one more petal and you have an idea there you go so just go back here And then I'm using the bead line as you know just to helping me out here and if for some reason if you start to see this is a little bit there's some space there if that's your chance just to add one more there there you go um, and then just go back in the same place and then I even just do two how many I have here? One, two, three, four. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So I will come one, two, here. Right. And then that's a good place for the half. The green one goes there. And then remember between these guys too. So I'm doing my main one here. Go back and then this guy, this, there we go. And then I'm going to come back here, has to be two more. And then I'm going to go up one more time. Go back and just about it for this section. All right, and I'll just go do a little loop, go through the loop, 
pose a knot with a knot and just uh, throw it somewhere in here. I'm gonna cut it. So there you have it. Um, of course, as you continue, you're just gonna keep adding things and it's gonna be uh, pretty close to what I have here. All right, you guys, it's about uh, nine o'clock and I think we are good. Um, just wanna say, uh, oh, just one thing before we finish, um, this is all dry now, which is wonderful. So the only thing left to do is just to um, add our um, our earrings, which I was just almost uh, finishing here. Um, and it's the same thing pretty much for both of them. So what you need is um, once you complete your flower, uh, of course, you're going to choose which side you like best. I like, um, I think this one is a good size, like that. So I'm going to find something sharp, which it definitely can be uh, the needle that you're working on. And I really make sure, like going through a couple times there, that I can see my hole. Once I have that, I have my jump ring here. And uh, what I need to do, I need to open up a little more. That's why I need to find my... Um, pliers just open a little more and then you have it oops there you go that's just enough like that and then I will add my uh, piece and sometimes it's easier to just put the uh, The jump ring first okay so now one important thing here is um, your piece of course needs to be uh, well felted on the edges so that's why it's very important to continue doing the work there and uh, second uh, it has to be a jump ring that's a little bit bigger so it can actually have a little briefing space between the edge and the, actually the hole so um, because over time, if you over if you use it, um, it might become a little bigger, and you need this extra space. So, once you have your jump ring through, just like that, make sure that's all the way through. You can add your piece, and then you're ready to close. Just like that, um, and then of course. Whatever you close, um, just move the, the jump ring around. And I like to go just around that area and felt a little more. So in this way, it's going to be a little more secure than, uh, um, than just... And, the, and then you make sure you have everything ready and secure there. And then, of course, the hole that you make bigger you're gonna make it smaller now because you are uh, felting again so that's uh that's how you do it that's pretty cool and then i will do this guy which uh, that's the one that we did it prior to the poppy same thing again it's gonna open a little more just open there we go and i need to make There we go. So now I can see exactly where my um, where my hole is, and it has to be a little bit more open in order for you to to have a better chance there. There we go. It might take you some time to find a hole, depending on the.
There you go. So it's completely through there, which is awesome. That's what we want. And at the same time, you have the space, right, to, um, to work with. I'm going to close it. Whoops. And then we just move on. There we go. There we go. So we have the two of them. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for watching and staying with me. This is almost two hours of workshop. Um, really appreciate your uh, company. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, this uh, video is going to be here for you guys. If you want to come back and try it again and watch it step by step, feel free to do so. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Feel free to like the video. I really appreciate that. Your like is going to help me to spread the word. And um, also let me know if you have any uh, suggestions. What can I do for the next uh, live, for the next stream? If you want to like to learn something, let me know. I'd love to, to share with you. And um, always looking for new ideas. I uh, hope you guys have a great uh, Mother's Day. Uh, enjoy yourselves. And um, hopefully you got something out of this workshop. Thank you so much. And uh, don't forget to subscribe for other videos like this. And don't forget to um, check your uh, the description uh, box where you get your all your freebies. The free, the free uh, needle felting guide and the templates to make those uh, two designs. All right. Well, thank you so much, you guys. You have a great evening. I see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.